Hi everybody, Kurt Zepp here. So today I want to do a relatively quick video on using a new tool. It's not a new tool, a tool that I discovered in Pix Insight. It's the Hydrogen Alpha RGB combination tool under the scripts menu. Now a lot of you guys are probably already familiar with it and you use it all the time, so so you probably already know about it. But I just discovered it. Now, just a little background, the way I used to do these combinations, I used to do it all in Photoshop. I used to take a, separate the channels and do a 30% blend in the red channel and then combine it and then do another combination where I would take the hydrogen alpha and put it into the luminosity channel. Then I discovered PixInsight and for a number of years I was doing a similar thing using pixel math. And let me tell you, that was very tedious, uh, the same way that using Photoshop was. But, you know, I got some good results doing it that way. Well, finally, I was just uh, pecking around the other day. I, I had another project I was working on, the my Phantom of the Opera Nebula, which is SH2173. And I saw that and I said, let me give this a shot. What the heck? And boy, was I flabbergasted. This thing did a far better job than I ever could of doing those crazy combinations. And I, I loved it. So, you know, there's a another YouTuber out there, uh, Queeve the Lazy Geek. Well, I may not be the lazy geek, but I'm up there with laziness. And boy, I love this. It makes it very simple. And, you know, I think it's not just laziness. It's just... You know, the good thing about Pix Insight is it gives you so many options of what you can do and how you can process stuff. But the problem is it gives you so many options of what you can process stuff. And I just go crazy. I'm, you know, I'm not sure. Sometimes I want it to look natural and a lot of it's your own personal preferences. So this tool really made it quite easy and I can actually do a lot of quick adjustments to see how it's going to look. I'm going to show you how to do that. I'll show you my processing up to that point, uh, which wasn't too extensive. And then uh, I'll show you my final image. Okay, let's go take a look. Okay, well, I'm back, folks. So I've got my stuff loaded up here, and I've already stacked it, and I've already cropped the images. They're the RGB images, and this is the Hydrogen Alpha image. I cropped it and then I ran Graxpert. Graxpert's my program that I use for background extractions. So rather than using uh, automatic or dynamic background, I would use that Graxpert. And it's under scripts, toolbox, and you just click on it and you'll see what happens. There's tons of videos on it. It's a secondary add-on, and but I think it's really worth it. It's a wonderful program. Anyway, so I have my HA, which looks like this. This is my blue. That's the green channel, and finally the red channel. So let me put this in some sort of order again. Now, the next thing I did is I combined the RGB and wound up with this. And I think that looks pretty dang good. So that's my RBG. For my HA, this is what I have right here. So I think that looks pretty good. For the HA channel, I ran Blur Exterminator. Okay, now the way I run Blur Exterminator, the first thing I do is I run it under Correct Only. And then I do it again using, I turn off that Correct Only, and then I would do it normally. And I get really good results doing that. Now to the RGB image, I do the same thing, although I add one one additional thing. The first thing I do, like I said before, I did I would do correct only. It looks like this. And you can see it uh, sharpened up a small amount, but what it really did is it made the stars nice and circular. I can zoom in and you can see it. The, the whole field is nice and circular. And then what I do is I would run under process, I'd come over here, color calibration, I would do spectrophotometric color calibration on this, okay? And then I would run that blur exterminator again, and this time I would do the normal sharpening stars, and I wound up getting this, 
okay all right so these are my base images so far now the next thing I do and this may differ from a lot of other people is I actually bring them into the nonlinear stage at this point I know a lot of people do still do more with linear um, you know I I'm not, I don't know which way is right or wrong but that's what I, I do I do the is bring it into nonlinear so the way I do the nonlinear uh, staging is I being lazy that I am I like to use Bill Blanchon's methods. They are super duper ooper pooper easy. Uh, Bill Blanchon's is another guy who makes a lot of plugs in, is an expert on this stuff. Uh, and uh, I would highly recommend uh, looking up Bill Blanchon's methods. He's got several different things. But one of the things he does is he has these uh, stretches here. There is a general hyperbolic uh, stretch. There is uh, linked stretch for RGB images and there's an unlinked stretch for hydrogen alpha type thing images or any narrow band uh, for that matter and when I ran that for the HA this is what my final or my initial stretched image looks like and again this was was using the unlinked stretch which is right here it looks like this it's actually a pixel math tool that he made and uh as i said i use it all the time and for the rgb image this is what i wound up with and for the rgb image again i use the linked stretch okay very simple to use so now these are now non-linear for the hydrogen alpha what i did next is i ran and this is what i typically do for most of my images i'll run star exterminator when i did that i wound up getting this for my starless image i can close this one up and here's my stars but we don't really care about those because i'm not really going to use those anymore and it looks pretty dang good i think look at that absolutely wonderful lots and lots and lots of detail all right i'll minimize that and i'll show you what i did with the rgb so here's the rgb Link stretch and I ran star exterminator on this I wound up getting this for my stars my starless image and that looks pretty good I think you'll see a little bit of color it's, it even has uh, with my one hour reach of RGB I still was able to pick up a little bit of the of the Phantom of the Opera Nebula now it does look quite a bit it looks quite noisy actually and so what I did, I wanted to see, geez, why is it so noisy? I mean, it's noisier than nor normal. And I separated it and wound up, this is my red. Here's my green channel. And then here's my blue channel. Now, you don't have to be a rocket scientist, so look, my blue channel looks nice and like I would expect. My red channel looks what I expect, but this green channel looks, well, looks pretty, <laughs> it looks really noisy. And so what I did for that was I used pixel math and I did a recombination and I blended the green channel with half red, well, a quarter red, no, a third red, a third of the blue, and a third of the green, and I wound up getting this for my new starless image. And that looks much smoother than the original. So anyways, so this was my, here's my base RGB image without the stars and here's my here's my base hydrogen alpha now this is where i did the my new technique here i don't know, I don't know it's my new day it's 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 not a new technique it's just something i newly discovered so i come over here to scripts and if you come over here to toolbox you just see all these other things on here and it, you know it's like i just happened to look over here and i saw Combine HA with RGB. I said, eh, what the heck? Might as well give it a shot. And hopefully it'll make my life a little bit easier. So I did this and I said, well, wow, this looks pretty cool. All you have to do is put your RGB image in here and it's, uh, oops, you know, I don't even have that. Sorry, hold on, folks. Let me pause everything. Okay, I'm back. Yeah, I, I actually did have it open. I'm sorry about that. That's why I don't make many processing videos because I'm all over the place. Yeah, so you want to put your rgb view in here here it is so there's my rgb view and then here's my ha view 
and I'll go look for that. Hopefully I'll put the right one in here for that. And bada boom, look at that. I could not believe it when I saw that. This, what I have here is far better than I would ever have been able to achieve on my own doing the blending methods that took me about a half hour or longer to do. So I was just unbelievable. I was just in awe when I saw this. And then it had, gives you some sliders here. Well, if you want to do less of a factor, you can see how it changes it. And it changes it pretty quickly. Or if you wanted to add more, that looks a little, I, I didn't do that. That looked a little too much to me. I, uh, I think I did, it gives you a default of two, but I think I did 3.5 or something. I can't remember what I did to be quite honest. But you, you have your choice. You can play around with it any way you want. You can actually move, remove this thing if you want. You know, just all sorts of slide, you know, just very simple. You know, I love something like this because you can really do a lot with something like this and it's quick and you can see your changes. So I, I like I said, I fell in love with this. Okay, so after I got my, or after I did all that, I had my, or I settled on this for my HA. And then what I did is I, Added the, added the stars to see what it looked like. And I, I'm not going to show you what I did. I, I played around with the stars. I did a, a small amount of star reduction using Bill's methods. And I've also added some color to the stars, um, tweaking them. And I wound up getting something like this, which was zeroing in on my final image. And here's my final image after doing some more playing with it. So again, I, I love this. That, that, that tool was very helpful. And I saw some other tools on there as well. So I might start trying some of those other tools out. Anyways, thank you very much for watching. I hope you learned something. I certainly did by stumbling on that tool. And we'll see you next time.